All right, the five devices you see here in front of me are all connected to my computer. You can hear a sound from each one. But if you notice, if you look really closely, none of them are connected with any type of audio cable. They are all connected via USB. No mixer required, no audio interface required. But how is this possible? That's what we're gonna be talking about in today's video. Today's video is all about USB audio and how I found it to be so convenient in, you know, putting together my recent live performance with a ton of gear. One of the main points of stress in building that setup was what audio interface am I going to use that has enough inputs for all of these devices? But then I realized all the devices I wanted to use have USB audio. So with a few little accessories, I was able to bypass the whole audio interface mixer thing altogether. And I'm going to go through all of the things that I use to make this all work and how I set it up on my computer. And I'm also going to talk about some of the problems you will run into when trying to set up a similar USB audio situation like this one. But without further ado, let's get right into it. First, let's talk about some of the gear accessories you might need to set this up. For our first little bit of gear here, you need a USB hub, obviously, to connect all of these devices at once. You want to make sure you're at least getting a USB 3.0 hub, a nice fast hub. Usually they have blue in the ports. I don't I don't know if y'all have noticed that, but USB 3.0 blue inside. I'm actually using two of these, which I will talk about why in a bit, but I'm also on Mac, which has USB-C ports. So I'm using the Apple USB-A to USB-C converter for this setup. A pair of these, this one is by Anchor. I will link it down in the description. Now this hub actually has the ability to be powered via another USB cable, which you can then plug into a wall. I'm not using it like that in this scenario, and I don't have too much experience using a USB powered hub. Again, I'm trying to use less wires, so I'm, I don't wanna just use USB hubs that then have to be plugged into a wall. It kind of takes away from the convenience factor. However, there are a lot of benefits to powered USB hubs in this kind of situation. I'll talk about that later as well. And also, you may not want to be so close to your laptop in these kind of situations that you're trying to connect all this gear to. You might want to do a performance where your laptop is far away, whatever. I have this big USB extension cable. This is again a USB 3.0 extension, so I can essentially just connect my hub to this extension keep the hub close to me, but I can be further away from the computer. So this gives me like six feet at least. And they've got these in all kinds of sizes, but I haven't had any performance issues with using a USB extender. All right, lastly, this one is not necessary at all, but if you don't like the look of all these messy cables like me, you can get these pretty cheap like cable management sleeves, which you can just take all your cables, wrap this in, and you get a much neater look than having, you know, five different cables, just a little easier on the eyes. If you're trying to have a clean home studio, which is a pipe dream anyway, it doesn't happen. It's not real. Those pictures that you see on my Instagram, it's immediately messy again after I take those. Before we talk about any of the accessories you might need, I guess I should say first and foremost, you should make sure your gear actually has USB audio. This is not a thing that every device comes with. More and more devices are coming with USB audio and I hope to see it more in the future. I mean, in 2024, 2025 and beyond, it should be industry standard. I'm looking at you, Ableton with Push 3. But all this gear in front of me obviously has USB audio. And when you get all this gear set up and you start making your own music, you're probably gonna wanna release that music so you and three of your closest friends Friends can add it to their Spotify playlist. Just kidding. You're going to have a ton of people listening to your music, especially if you watch this channel and you learned everything you know from me. I mean, you're destined for success. But if you do want to get your music over onto Spotify, Apple Music, or on Instagram or TikTok, you should use DistroKid. They're the distributor that I've used since well before they ever sponsored the channel. And I've had no issues and they've actually been a great company to work with after all this time. The reason I initially signed up for DistroKid is because you just pay once per year and you can release as much music as you want. You don't have to think about, oh, I have to pay to release this album or pay to release that album. No, it's all covered under your annual fee. The motto of be prolific is pretty inspiring to me. And then beyond just getting your music onto the platforms, which they make really easy, you can do it via the mobile app or you can do it via desktop, is that there's a bunch of other features for artists 
things like hyperfollow, where you can create basically a single page for your release, where it will put links to everywhere your music is available in case people listen on Spotify or Apple Music. But then you can also add your own links to that hyperfollow link. So I was able to add like my YouTube videos that I made for the songs on the album. And I was also able to add my Bandcamp link because that's a way better platform for artists than any of the other ones. But yeah, there's other cool things like promo cards, which is basically just images you can generate to promote your release and a whole host of other features for DistroKid members. So if you are looking for a distributor, you can use my link in the description and get 7% off first year of your DistroKid annual membership. And when you support the sponsor, you support the channel. So go check out what DistroKid has to offer for now back into talking about USB audio in this crazy setup. Now that we've got everything connected, let's take a look in the software and figure out how to get all this routed properly. Now, usually when you connect a USB audio device and you open your DAW's preferences, if you go to your audio input device, you'll usually see them independently listed, right? Like I can see the Seek track here, I can see the OP1 here, the 404, I see all my devices there. The problem is you can usually only select one of these and we obviously want to connect all five. So what we need to do is create an aggregate device. I'm gonna walk through how to do this on Mac, but I'll leave a resource on how to do it in Windows in the description. Okay, first up, we need to open up the audio MIDI setup. And on the left side here, we should see a whole list of all the audio devices connected to our computer. So once again, we see all of these instruments connected. We see a Scarlet interface that I have connected and all the other devices, but we wanna create a new aggregate device. So if we click the plus down here in the corner, create aggregate device. And now this aggregate device, which we can rename super cool ag, we can go into this list and check each of the devices that we want to be a part of this single aggregate device. So we're gonna check the box next to the SP404 Mark II input. Obviously we want the input, the J6, the S1, the OP1, and the seek track. Is that all five devices? One, two, three, four, five. Yes, it is. And it will also tell you here in this little picture what track these are gonna be on. Because remember, these are stereo, so they're each gonna come with a left and a right. Also, even though we're not getting into timing and clock in this video, you can choose which of these devices will be a clock source, and you can choose to check the drift correction button so that devices will constantly correct back to the proper clock source if they fall out of time. Okay, so we renamed this already, Super Cool Ag. Now I'm going to exit the audio MIDI preferences. And one important thing to note is that anytime we make a change to our aggregate devices, we're gonna have to reopen our DAW. So I've exited Ableton Live now, and we're gonna open it back up again. Okay, so now that my DAW is open, I'm gonna to go to my settings. I am going to choose an audio input device and look at that, the super cool AG has been added into my input devices. For the next step, we need to go to input config and we need to make sure that we check the boxes that we want. Again, since each of these devices is in stereo, I'm gonna to wanna to make sure that I have each one of these stereo inputs checked so that we get the stereo signal from each instrument. Now I can get rid of all of the junk in my regular template and let's just stay with one audio track for now. Drop down menu so I can see all of my inputs. I can see both the mono and the stereo inputs and let's just play one of the instruments. There we go, seven and eight is lighting up. I hit audio auto and arm that. We're now hearing the OP1 come through. I'm just gonna make another audio track. Do the same thing for the J6, that's on three and four. Keep it moving, go to the S1, that's on five and six. Again, I'm just checking which levels light up there. I love the sound of the S1. Two more to go. Okay, let's do Seek Track next. That's on nine and 10. And finally, the 404, which is on one and two. Now, one more step you might wanna take is to make it so you can arm all of these tracks at once. You can do that either by going to live settings and going to record warp and launch, then to exclusive and turn arm off. I'm gonna keep it on, and then I'm just gonna highlight all of the tracks by holding shift and selecting all of them. Press the arm button and they'll all arm anyway. 
everything is armed, everything is running into our DAW. Okay, but now let's talk about some issues that you might run into when trying to connect a bunch of your devices via USB audio. Earlier, I mentioned that I'm using two USB hubs, and the reason for that is these devices can draw a lot of power from a single USB hub, and that can lead to issues with your audio. For instance, I was originally trying to connect four devices all in a single hub. I believe these four here take away the J6. But there was a problem as soon as I connected the Seek track where my audio started crackling no matter what I did in the aggregate device. Once I removed the Seek track from that hub, the crackling went away and I moved the Seek track to a second hub. And as you can see, no audio crackling. There wasn't just audio crackling on the Seek track itself, it was crackling for all of the instruments. So I knew it was kind of like a system-wide problem. So separating them on the hubs made a big difference there. A second reason I had to separate hubs was because the S1 and the J6 were not playing well together on the same hub, which is kind of ironic since they're siblings, but I guess, you know, some siblings don't get along, so maybe it's not ironic at all. But yes, having the J6 and the S1 on the same hub was causing an issue where only one of them could have been working in the aggregate device at a time. So again, I just took one of them and put it to a second hub. So I think the safest thing to do if you're going to be doing a big setup like this is to divide it into two separate hubs so you can distribute the power a little bit better or get a bigger powered USB hub. One more con of this setup is that since we're not running audio, we can't do any sort of inline processing. You all know that I love my hologram microcosm pedal. However, it only has audio in, so I'm not able to, you know, run one of these devices into the microcosm without then running it out via audio. I could, of course, have an audio interface as a part of this aggregate device, but if you're trying to avoid the audio interface or the mixer altogether, that will be another con of this purely digital setup. A final con is that some of the troubleshooting and setup steps are a little annoying because, as I mentioned earlier, every time you make a change to your audio devices in your aggregate, you need to exit out of your DAW and reopen it. And if you're really trying to get to the bottom of some issues that you're having, that can get really tedious. It's what I've been going through to make sure these USB setups work properly. And also anytime I accidentally remove the USB cable, well, it doesn't happen accidentally, but if you do disconnect a device, you should hear now that none of my devices are working. So like any change in power or a device being unplugged is going to completely basically shut down your aggregate device in your DAW. So it is a little tedious and a little annoying, but once everything is set up and you have everything secure, it is pretty convenient. And you know, connecting via audio has its inconveniences as well. So there's a trade-off with both. All right, and that's all I've got for you today. If you're going to set up a USB audio jam station, let me know in the comments down below. Like I said, this recent performance video was running off of completely USB audio. So this is something I dreamed of when I first started doing electronic music, not having to have a mixer with tons of inputs to connect all my gear. Lots of other tutorials on this channel, as well as live performance too. Don't forget, I'm a musician and I teach. It's like both at the same time. So you can watch what I do, get inspired by that and then I show you how to do it. That's how this tutorial happened. So if you like that, subscribe to the channel, leave a like on this video. And if you really want to support, become a channel member or support the sponsor DistroKid. Link is in the description. That's going to be it for now. Thank you all so much for watching. This has been Tatro. Have a good one.